So hello and welcome back to Strathpeffer Junction. Uh, today we're taking uh, a fourth look at Andrew Carnegie, that's uh, 47517 which is uh, Lima's Class 47 in large logo livery. Now, um, those of you who've been following the channel um, for a while, or even more recently perhaps, um, will probably have seen the parts one, two, and three that I've done in the series of upgrading this locomotive. Uh, part one, we looked at adding a TTS sound chip to it. Part two was uh, directional lighting, and part three was uh, concluding the directional lighting and this part four is going to be replacing the Ringfield motor or pancake motor that's in it uh, with a CD motor. Okay, so let's get started with it. It's uh, a project that I've been wanting to do for quite a while, um, but I had to wait for a, a number of uh, bits and pieces to come from China and from other places, but they have arrived now and uh, these are they. So what have we got here? Well, we need a variety of things for this particular project, um, but the key things are the replacement motor, which is just a, a small motor from a CD or, DD, or DVD drive, little uh, plastic gears, so that's uh, eight teeth, uh, 5 mil outer diameter and 2 mil inner diameter to fit on the shaft here. Um, now these are optional, um, these are rectifier diodes, these are surface mount but you can get ones with wee legs as well, three hole ones. Um, you don't have to put these in if you're using a DCC decoder with the converted loco um, and that decoder allows you to set the maximum speed then you can use that but I like to use a combination of diodes which have the effect of reducing the voltage slightly. Um, I like to pair that with a DCC decoder just to make absolutely sure that we're, we're not going to overload anything. But I'll talk a wee bit more about that when I get to that stage. We also have a bit of brass rod here, uh, which I use as a sort of bush um, to, to pad out the, the bearing that's already in there so that the new motor um, will work with the, the existing uh, setup inside. So that's the key components and ends a variety of other things from um, modeling saws to screwdrivers to um, you know, exacto knives and wire strippers and all the kind of general gubbins that you need for a project like this. But uh, anyway, enough talking, let's get on with it. Okay, so I'm gonna pop all this just to, out of the way just for one minute and uh, get into the locomotive itself. Um, now, I didn't replace the buffers on the locomotive um, from my, my previous work on it, so it's fairly straightforward to get it off, but uh, get the body off, I should say. But if you have replaced the buffers, you'll need to pull them out first. And then with these lemas, there's little clips, I think two on either side, down the body. So we just need to pop them open so we can get the body off. There we go. Excellent. Okay, so that's the body off now. Um, because we've already installed a, a DCC decoder in this, um, there's some extra gubbins here which will probably not be in yours um, if you are just uh, starting from scratch with a DC or analog loco. But it, to all intents and purposes, what we next need to do is exactly the same. We need to disconnect um, all of the wires here from the motor using the soldering iron so that we can free all of the electronics, all the wiring from the motor, and then we can deal with the motor itself and the conversion. Um, now that's a pretty straightforward uh, thing to do. I'm not going to cover it in the video, but uh, sometimes if you're finding that the solder isn't melting enough, pop your soldering iron up and maybe also apply a little bit of flux, but uh, you know, just take your care um, and it's easy enough to take it off. One thing that I do like to do before I dismantle anything is to get my mobile phone, here we have it, and take a photo of it um, as it was before I started. So if there's any ever, every, any, but start again, if there's ever any problem with it, you can at least uh, have some kind of reference photo to get you back to, to where you are when you started. So I'll just take that photo now and uh, then we'll come back once that's done. Okay, so I've taken the photo and I have uh, unsoldered the, the two wires here that were linking the decoder to the motor. One thing that I'm going to do for, for this uh, particular project too is just to disconnect the uh, the pickup wire from the front bogey here. And um, You might be able to get away without doing that, depends how much wire you've got, but uh, just to keep it all clean and simple, I'm going to desolder that from the front. So again, make sure you've got a photo or some kind of record of what wire goes where, so at the, uh, the rear end of this video we can uh, solder it all back together again and have it working. 
Great, so we've got all the wires desoldered. Now what we need to do is to remove the front bogey and the motorized bogey. So the way we do that is by flipping it over and you'll see that there is a hex head or Phillips head screw at either side. So we remove those screws and once we've done that, uh, the bogeys should, fingers crossed, there we go, they should, fingers crossed, uh, fall out. Well, in a controlled manner, let's not let them fall out completely. So pop that to one side. There we go, excellent. So that's the, the bogey out and partly disassembled. We don't need the body anymore. Well, not at the moment anyway. We definitely need it for later on. Otherwise, this is a pretty, pretty pointless project. But anyway, we'll pop this to one side and we'll focus on the motor assembly. Okay, so I have uh, put the, the fake bogey fascia to one side because we don't need that either. And, and what we're left with is really the, the motorized bogey or the, the powerhouse of the, the Lima 47, the Ringfield motor, also known as pancake motors. Um, what we've got here on this side is uh, the brass contacts, which originally took the power from the, the track or more recently via the DCC decoder. Uh, we've got little springs here which push the, the carbon onto the, the actual motor inside to allow the power to transfer into where the magnets and the windings are. Um, if we turn it round, what we've got on the, the rear is the uh, the gear system. Um, so we have the, um, the shaft here coming through from the actual motor and then all the gearing going down to the wheels. So what we need to do anyway is to disassemble this. Effectively, what we're looking to have uh, at the end of the disassembly process is the, the framework of the bogey itself, we retain the gears, but pretty much everything else goes because it's all part of the Ringfield motor, which we won't need anymore. So um, without further ado, let's get on to the disassembly. So what we need for this stage uh, of the project is a, a crosshead or a Phillips head screwdriver, kind of uh, small to medium size. Uh, and we just want to remove the two screws on either side of the Ringfield motor here. Um, we may or may not need these screws again, so I'll pop them to one side just in case, but um, a lot of the stuff that we remove uh, as part of this project is uh, is not stuff that we're going to need again. Now, I keep it just if I, in case I need it for any future replacement parts for any lemas that I don't convert, but you may not need to keep it. If you're one of these people who doesn't hoard, then it might well be stuff you can throw out. Anyway, so we've got that removed, uh, and what you'll see here, um, there's my, my uh, tweezers, uh, you see the springs here, which have popped out, there's one, and then we've got the, the carbon brush, and another one there, and then the spring is in here. Now these ones are actually in, I don't know how well this will come out, but these, uh, these ones are in pretty good condition. Um, they don't have very much wear on them, and I don't think this uh, 47 really had a huge amount of use. Uh, but the motor is still pretty noisy, um, so while it was performing okay for a Ringfield motor, it was pretty noisy and I'm just not a fan of them. So uh, f for my collection, my preference, I want to change it anyway, but uh, unless you're having problems with it, you may want to stick with it. It's, uh, it's just what your preference might be. Anyway, so we'll remove uh, this inner, inner gubbins as well. We're not going to need any of that, so we'll just pull that out. Now this has got the, the magnets round about uh, and here's the windings on the motor here. Um, so you might feel a bit of resistance when you pull it out but again this is actually a really it's a, it's a really good specimen of a ring field. I, I feel terrible in some respects taking this to bits but uh, I'm just not a fan on them so uh, that's that's the bottom line for me but I think I will keep all of this so I'll set this to one side uh, just for the future. Right, what else do we have here? Well, we've got the magnets, and uh, again, we, we don't need the magnets, so uh, we can we can take these out. They may need a little bit of persuasion, so we'll see how we get on with this. We'll get a wee flathead screwdriver just to prise the top of the... Uh, there we go, that's it coming out now. Okay, so I have managed to conquer the, uh, the magnet. It was... Uh, the wee metal pip that's on the top here was uh, sticking out more than previously. But anyway, again, we'll pop that to one side and uh, we'll save it for, for another day. So what we're left here then is uh, what we need for the, the rest of the project. We've got the gearing still intact um, and we, we have this recess here, which is where the, the new motor will fit in. So uh, one thing that I do like to do, and I know there's a couple of other videos on YouTube on, on doing this particular um, conversion job and they all approach it differently. Some of them leave them in place, some remove the cogs. 
I like to remove them um, just to give them a wee clean up and check them for any flash and so on. Uh, but you don't have to do that, it's not mandatory, but uh, that's what we're going to do next anyway. Oh, and before I go, again, if you are uh, not got a great memory like me, take a photo of the arrangement of the gears so it makes it dead easy to put them all back in exactly the right place. Okay, so to remove the cogs on this particular one, we need the nut spinner. Uh, and the one that I've got here is a 3.0 nut spinner made by Expo. Um, on uh, some of the other Lima models, there's not uh, nuts to spin. There's little uh, metal um, retainers that are sort of sprung. Um, and uh, they, you don't need a tool to take them off, but you do need to be very careful that you don't overbend when you're taking the gears off, otherwise they may not hold the gears in place properly after. But anyway, we've got a, a kind of more straightforward one, which is a little nut spinner, so uh, let's take that off. And again, we'll just set these, uh, these nuts to the side. Um, and what we'll do now then is, we'll just uh, take off all of these gears, and I think I'll probably leave them in roughly the order they came off just to aid my memory, even though I do have a photo of it all. There we go. Now, despite this uh, Lima being in pretty decent condition, <clears throat> I am seeing quite a lot of build-up of fluff and dirt and various other um, detritus behind here. So it is a good idea, I think, if you're doing this kind of depth of work to a loco, give it a good clean and lubrication um, as part of that. So let's take these last ones off anyway. Okay, so the bearing. Um, bearing's pretty important. <laughs> it's what allows the motor to free, uh, spin freely uh, and without uh, any kind of restriction which then you know, adds load to the motor and it can get hot and burn out and so on. So um, we need to take this out so that we can adapt it to be used with the, the new motor here. Um, the way that we do this is we pop it from the outside in. Um, it's a, a tapered interference fit hole, so if you try and push it from this side, you'll probably end up damaging uh, either the, the chassis, probably the chassis because it's made of plastic, or the bearing. So we'll just pop a screwdriver in from this side. If it isn't budging, don't just keep ramming it because you might end up breaking the plastic, but just work it really carefully, sometimes a little bit of a wiggle, and eventually it should pop out. Um, this one is being more stubborn than other ones I've dealt with in the past, but uh, there we have it. That's it popped out. Oh, running away there. I suspect this is about a 3mm inner diameter, um, and the um, the motor that we want to fit has got a, a 2mm, so we're going to have to pack it out. Uh, and the way that we pack it out is using the brass rod. Uh, now this brass rod has a 2mm outer, uh, sorry, a 2.5mm I think it is outer diameter. Um, and uh, a 2 mil inner, so it fits snugly around the bushing and then this motor fits snugly inside like that, which is ideal. So what we want to do is to fix this to the brass rod and then we'll cut it down to size. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, a trick that I um, learnt from another YouTuber whose name is uh, Phil something or other. Sorry, I can't remember your, your surname, Phil. Um, but uh, you, you've you shown me how to do this in your video, which was an excellent one. Uh, so um, I, I'm boring your idea. I don't want to take credit for it myself. Um, but what we're going to do is solder this bushing onto this brass rod. So the, the way to do this, if you're familiar with brass kit maker or anything like that, is apply some liquid flux. I've got my favorite brand of liquid flux here. Um, and uh, pop the bushing on and then flow some solder in. Um, and what we want to do beforehand is just to rough up, like you do with any brass kit, rough up um, the, uh, the brass rod and then rough up the inside of the, the bushing as well so that the solder has something to, to really adhere to it nicely. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, I'll just do it off camera. There's no point showing you how, how to rough something up with, with the sandpaper, but we'll do that off camera. I'll come back and uh, I'll, uh, I'll look at the actual soldering itself. I've had my soldering iron heating up there on the side so it's all good to go. Um, I like to use a reasonably high temperature um, for this, so I think it's a set about 360, maybe a wee bit higher. Um, so anyway, we've uh, we popped that down there. Let's open up the flux here. Again, be really careful. This is brilliant flux, but these bottles are notorious for falling over. So uh, do be careful if you're going to, to use this bottle or this type of flux. But anyway, let's uh, get some flux. You don't want to go absolutely overboard in it. You just need enough that uh, it will help the, the flow of solder. There we go. Excellent. Let's pop 
pop the lid on and safely to one side. The other thing that I use when I'm doing this kind of uh, fine art, or fine art, that sounds rubbish, this uh, sort of fine, fine soldering anyway, is, is very fine solder wire. So uh, this is 0.5 mil solder um, and uh, I find this works well. Anything bigger than that uh, and for this type of soldering it just becomes pretty much impossible. But anyway, let's uh, slip that bush on there. Let's get it flush at that side. There we go. We've got the uh, soldering iron here. And hold the iron there. Let it heat up there. There we go. Job's a good one. That's all there is to it. Okay, so we've got the uh, the the rod and the the bushing solder together. So now what we want to do is just to use this modelling saw to cut it flush. Um, now it needs to be pretty much totally flush. Um, if there's a tiny little bit, we can uh, use sandpaper just to to, to tidy it up. But um, the best thing is to cut it as flush and as uh, straight and flat as you possibly can. So I'll go and do this off camera just to make sure that I do a reasonably good job of it and we'll come back when I'm done. Okay, so that's it, cut flush. The, uh, there's a little sharp edge there, so I'm just going to bring in a little bit of sandpaper again uh, and just sand that bottom bit down. Let's get that there. There, sand it flush like that. Um, what's also quite good is if you've got a a drill bit or some uh, two mil welding rod or something like that that you can uh, pop in one side just to ream it out a bit because there may well be a little sharp burr just inside it as well. So if you've got something that's two mil like a drill bit as I say or some kind of rod or something um, you can get it in and ream it. The other thing that you could do if you're very careful is just to, to get a, a knife with a sharp blade and just carefully go around the inside of that. Um, again, that will take away any sharp bits of metal and leave it nice and smooth so that it runs smoothly with the motor. Okay, so that's the bushing um, smoothed down. I've reamed it and taken off the burrs. So what we can do now is to reinstall it back inside uh, the, uh, the actual motor framework. Now this can be a wee bit fiddly just because it's a small, small, wee small thing, but um, I often find that just a, a pair of modelling tweezers can sort of line it up just right and then I tend to take again a round screwdriver so I can centre it in the middle of the hole there and push it, push it back down and there we have it, that's it back in place. Now I, uh, I've i done it so that the, the side that was uh, smoothed down and filed is on the outside um, now, even though I have filed it down, there may be the odd little rough part left. So I've just popped that on the outside uh, and the nice, totally smooth factory finish bits are in the inside. So that's maybe something worth considering, um, but it's not absolutely mandatory. Okay, so now that we've got the, the bushing, the, the uh, amended bushing in place, I thought we'd just quickly do a dry fit of the motor just to make sure everything is lining up properly and fitting snugly. Um, so we'll just line that up there, pop it through there. And there we have it, so it's sitting comfortably in the middle there. There's no lateral play. This particular motor is a slimmer version uh, of the, the different CD motors. Um, I think it's 12, don't quote me on it. I will go and check and I'll put something up on the screen just here, uh, just to let you know the dimensions. But certainly it's a slimmer line version. But anyway, it fits in fine, it's clearing this wheel here. So we're good to go. So we'll move on to, to reassembling the gears. Okay, so in order to get the gears reassembled, we need to um, bring in our brand new uh, gear that we, we purchased. So this is the one which is two mil inside, five mil outside and eight teeth. Uh, and this will slide um, snugly onto the, the shaft from the motor. Um, the one thing to mention is that this is slightly too big, so we need to shave about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters off it. Um, and as I learned from a, an, another video, I think it was again the one by Phil, um, if you slide it on here, that is the easiest way to, to get a good square a square cut. So just slide it on a little bit, not all the way home. Um, and then what I like to do is just pop it on the side of my cutting mat 
um, like this so that I can get it flat. Um, I can line it up so that everything is square and then just use a sharp craft knife just to cut it down. And by doing it like this, you don't run into any problems of potentially bending the shaft because you're using the mat and your alignment here just to, to support that shaft. So anyway, I'll cut this down to size and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so we've got the gear cut down to size. It's the one on uh, your right, my left. Um, hopefully you can see the, the size difference here. I mentioned in the previous segment there that it's about one and a half to two mil. Um, it was wrong actually. I meant about one mil to one and a half. Um, it's going to vary slightly between models because of just how they're manufactured, the tolerances involved, but probably somewhere between uh, one mil and one mil and a half is what you need to remove. So we'll get rid of that one there. Um, we've got this cog now. So what we need to do is just to install that onto the shaft of the, the, the motor itself. It can be a bit of a tight squeeze. And then what we want to do is just to push it all the way down to the bottom so that it's flush like that. Okay, and now that we've got it flush along the bottom, I think what we'll do is just quickly bring in the, the bogey itself uh, and we'll just pop it in for a dry fit just to make sure that it's all good. Yeah, that's looking all right. Um, so what I'll bring it over here and hopefully you'll be you'll be able to, to get a wee bit of a look in there. So what we want is we want the, the gear to be just shy of where the bush is so that we can see a little bit of air between it. Um, so it's not going to rub against the plastic or the bush, but it will engage well with the, the cog or the gear there. Um, so also talking of the cogs and gears, I have popped one in here. Um, just for a, a bit of a dry fit so that we can just check and yes it's catching well there's a good interlocking teeth there so nothing's going to slip so brilliant excellent that's a that's a good result so far and um, so what we're going to move on to now is uh, is refitting the motor fixing it in place once we've done that we can reassemble all the gears and everything else okay so the way that i like to do this step uh, is to, to insert the motor into place where we want it to be uh, and then to, to pop on the gears at the top, the top two gears um, because that will help to hold the motor in exactly the position that we want it so when we come to, to glue it, which is my preferred method um, that it will all be completely lined up and there shouldn't be any strain on the, the motor and that everything should work well and nothing will overheat or burn out. So I've already fitted one of the gears there um, and now referring to the photo or the notes that we took earlier, we want to make sure it's the right gears that we use, but we'll pop the second one back in there. Now you have to be careful in these ones um, that, uh, that you don't break anything. They are plastic, they are quite delicate. Um, but there we are, it just pops it into place like that, brilliant. Um, the other way you can do it is to pop the gears in and then to slide the motor in. <coughs> it's not always the easiest way to do it, sometimes it doesn't give you enough room to manoeuvre. But anyway, that's it in place. So let's give that a wee spin there just to see, yep, everything's working fine, brilliant. So I'm going to lay it on its front now so that it <coughs> sits in place. Uh, and then we're going to move over to the next stage, which is, uh, which is gluing. <laughs> 